Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and in this video, we're going to talk about Primer Sealer. Now, I'm following on this series for the ASE series and for students to learn that maybe have to do more of their learning from home now that uh, everybody's having to stay home due to this virus. So this is kind of follow along with the ASE series, and this topic is going to be, let me get the, it's going to be a, uh, uh, task 719, which is apply suitable primer sealer to the area being refinished, and 720, scuff and sand to remove to remove nibs or imperfections from the sealer. So that's the areas that we're going to be talking about. And uh, again, uh, if you're trying to study for an ASE test, uh, you're stuck at home, and you're needing a little bit of additional information as a collision repair student, uh, if you're just a DIY wanting to learn. Uh, this, uh, you know, you can all learn from this, or if you're doing the ICAR test, you know, some of you are going to be uh, uh, trying to pass the, the ICAR test at the end of the program, which my students will be, you know, to become platinum, uh, I, uh, ICAR platinum certified. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Primer sealer. So what is it? What is its purpose? And why do we use it? And do we have to use it? Um, I'm going to share my screen again and go over here and show you couple of things here. So primer sealer, you know, it, it's designed to, to hide what's underneath, you know, so that you got a nice uniform uh, color. Because if you have some primer spots like right here and right here, and, you, and you're, you, you're spraying, let's say, a, a, a blue metallic, well, you may spray that fender and it looks nice. Maybe even in the booth it looks good, but you're gonna see through and see that different color. And it may not look like a, a different color. You might not even be able to tell in the booth. You pull it outside and it's gonna kinda of look like a stain right there. And what that is, is a lot of your colors are not full of pigment. You know, like blacks, whites, all your solid colors have a lot of pigment in them. But some, some colors don't have a lot of color. You know, a lot of it's binders and especially high metallic colors. So no, no matter how many coats you put on top of it, you're going to be able to see through that a little bit. So if you're painting something that has different colors, has some primer spots, you want to be sure that you have one uniform color so that you don't have that problem. Now, depending on the paint manufacturer, I know with PPG, what color do you use? Each color has a specific uh, color that's supposed to, that's designed to go underneath it, and we call that the gray shade. It's uh, basically just the different shades of gray that is uh, designed to go for whatever color you're putting on top of it. And the way you know, well, you look at uh, when you're looking up the paint code in your computer, you know, it will tell you use a G5 or G3, and that's just the shade of gray that you're going to use underneath it. It will tell you. If you're getting your paint at a paint supply store, you may have to go in there and ask them, you know, uh, you know what kind of sealer and what color of sealer, what gray, sh what the gray shade should be, and they should be able to look that up for you. But let's go over that a little bit more. Uh, let's see, I want to go talk about this one for a little bit. So yeah, th these are. Uh, let's say there's gray shades. You got everything from white to black. And I think in PPG, they have five different gray shades. Uh, here I'm just showing four, but you'll get the idea. So usually if you're painting a real light color or white or anything like we were about to show in the, the, this Jeep, uh, it's going to use a white sealer so that it hides everything underneath it and it takes less paint to hide. You know, that's the purpose of the primer sealer. But you got these different colors, and of course, a dark color is going to use your darker uh, gray shade. So sealer, do you have to use it? You don't, but it can really uh, save you from having to use more paint, trying to cover up spots that didn't match, like primer spots or something like that. It gives you a nice uniform finish, and uh, you know it, it really does save time. But you don't have to use it. If you uh, had a, a new car that had no paint problems, and all you had to do is sand and paint it, you know, you could just uh, put, as long as you didn't sand through nowhere, you know, sand down to some of the undercoating where it's a different color, you could spray your base coat right on top of that. Uh, primer sealer does have some benefits. You know, it gives it some durability, adds some mills, a little bit better chip resistance, and of course, you know, it helps you hide what's underneath so that you have a uniform color. 
Now to go over that just a little bit more, uh, you know, like a lot of your colors, like this, this is a translucent color right here. So it may vary depending on what's underneath it. So if you sprayed a real light sealer underneath it and then painted the car, it might look like that. But if it, uh, the rest of the car had a dark sealer under it, you know, it might look that. So if, even though you put two or three coats of base coat, and if you have the wrong undercoating, wrong sealer under here, that is definitely not gonna match that. So it's real important with a lot of these metallics and, and translucent colors that don't cover real, real well, make sure that you find out what primer sealer you're supposed to use so that whenever you do match it up to the car, if that's the color of undercoating it had, you know, that will be the same color when you're done. So that's kind of the purpose of primer sealer. Uh, here's just another example of a couple different colors, how the, the different, <coughs> excuse me, how the different undercoatings can really make a difference on what the color is out here. And uh, that's, uh, you know, like uh, if you had a fender off and it was supposed to have a, a dark undercoating, a dark primer sealer, and you sprayed it with a just a gray, you know, that color is not going to match, that door is not going to match. It wasn't necessarily that the paint wasn't correct or the paint wasn't mixed right. It could just be that the, the primer sealer was off. Now, do you have to primer seal everything? Like if I'm doing a, a blend job, I'm not going to seal the whole area. You know, I'm just going to seal whatever was primed. And so that that's the correct uh, gray shade is the rest of it. And then I'm going to blend my paint into the existing paint. So you do not have to use primer sealer, but it really does save you a lot of steps. And of course, like your real dominant, your real high pigment colors, you know, your blacks and some of those, your whites uh, have a lot of pigment in it. And usually you are going to uh, achieve full hiding. You know, and in, in, that, in that case, it really wouldn't matter what gray shade you have under it because you're going to cover that up completely anyway, kind of like in this example right here. So let's go. Okay, right here. Now you can see that he, this has all been primed and blocked, and, and it is already a uniform color. So the reason we are sealing this, and even though we've already primed and blocked it and it's uniform, it's because this uh, Jeep's going to be painted a pearl white. And it calls for this lighter sealer. So we wanted it to make sure that it looks like it shows that it's supposed to. And so we went ahead and shot the white primer sealer. Not only does that uh, uh, give it some more adhesion, you know, it's good for adhesion for the base coat. Um, it also uses less base coat. You will not have to put as much base coat trying to get it to cover as well. So really, in my opinion, I do like using primer, primer sealer and uh, think, it, think that it really works well. So. That is a, it's a good to use in my opinion. Now you're gonna get opinions from different people. Uh, some people may not use it. They may have primer surfacer that they mix in the correct gray shade. For example, uh, whenever you primer surface something and sand it out, they may have pre-mixed their primer surfacer to where it's already the correct gray shade. And if that's the case, you know, you could uh, paint right over that. And you wouldn't have that problem with it being a different color. So. Uh, that is the purpose of primer sealer. Let me. So hopefully that clears up. I know there is a lot of questions all the time about primer surface or primer sealer. You know, what's the purpose of it? Do I even need to use it? In my opinion, you know, I would say to use it. PPG recommends using it. And I don't know about all paint makers, you know, and everybody has different opinions, but that is my opinion that it is, uh, you know, it's good. It saves money. It'll save you from uh, having something that you might be able to see through it and see a stain under or something like that. Now, after you do use your primer sealer, and this uh, goes all the way to clear coat, really, uh, you know, the, the next thing that it talked about is denibbing. And what that's talking about is getting a real fine sandpaper, maybe like a thousand grit. And if you find a piece of dirt in the sealer, go ahead and sand that out. So, because if you just keep painting on top of that, you know, you put your base coat in your clear coat. That, that dirt nib is still going to be there and then you're going to have to buff and polish it out. So during your sealer stage, you know, you're going to, you're going to let that flash, let it dry and, and let, it, you know, you might have to let it dry just a little extra. Usually it depends on the one you're using. A lot of the flash times before base coat could be 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or, you know, whatever the technical data sheet says for the sealer that you're using. But real lightly, you can go in there and kind of denib 
that dirt spec out and you know and retack it off and then that way you won't have that uh, that dirt nib in there whenever you get done painting and this goes for your base coat too you know in between your coats of base coat if you find it's a dirt nib on there and uh, there's a problem you can get some sandpaper lightly sand it out and then put some more base coat on top of that so that way you can keep a clean job until you get to the clear coat now once the clear coat starts it's kind of hard to fix any problems like that I mean the clear coat stays tacky and once you put a coat of that on you really can't touch it or sand it or anything like that you're just gonna have to deal with it after you're done spraying you know and then of course after you have applied all the clear coat then you can come back if there's a dirt nib you can sand that out and polish it out or if there's a run or whatever so uh, you can really work with your your sealers and in your base coats until that point so hopefully this clears up those two topics um, on the on the sealer and uh, help, helps answer your questions on that and the next uh, I think we're gonna be talking about some uh, after you seal it you know you need to use some uh, seam sealer you know that'd be the time to seam seal but anyway we'll talk about that in another lesson I also have coming up, we've, I've been working with another instructor to stream some live cahoots for you. And that's just basically some quizzes on there. We're still trying that, working some bugs out, but hopefully we can have that where we can stream that to you live and you can be using your cell phone to answer the questions and it lets you know who scored what and who got the most answers right. This is something new to me. This is something that this other instructor has used a lot and he says the students really enjoy using this. And, um, you know, the younger generation probably knows a lot more about that than I do. So uh, we're going to give that a try. I've got a, uh, I've got Lauren Fix, the car coach. You know, she's going to uh, do a, a collaborative video with me talking about, you know, how to keep yourself safe in the shop uh, with this virus going on and some other things and how, how she got involved with the automotive industry. Also going to be talking with Hillary with Ink and Iron, all female garage. And she's gonna talk, give us some block sending tips in restoration. She's in the restoration side of this. So we got a lot of videos heading your way. So just stay tuned and uh, we'll have more heading your way. But thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.